Hi, my name is Ty Tessman, and today we're going to do the second video in the series on how to get the most out of your nitro engine. So in this video, we're going to talk about the fuel system and how it works. Uh, so this fuel system is a pressured system, and we'll start from the exhaust, which puts pressure into the tomb pipe, which feeds the pressure line, which puts pressure into the fuel tank, and then pushes fuel into the fuel line, then goes into the carburetor. And if any one of these parts are um, disrupted or hindered in any way, it's going to affect your tune a lot. It's going to make you maybe feel like you have the wrong tune when it's really something wrong with your pressure system and fuel delivery. So I'm going to start at the back of the motor here, uh, at the exhaust gasket. It's very important that this stays well maintained and uh, if there's any rips or anything in it, it can really affect your how the engine runs. And some ways to check if it's leaking or not, you might have some uh, excess dirt caked up, kind of like a, a wet mud look almost underneath the engine or kind of at the back here around the gasket because when it gets dust it'll kind of stick to that and form back there. Uh, so having that uh, in good shape is very important. And when I go to install the gasket on the engine, I'm going to put it on the engine first, get it set in those little grooves that are in there. You can see it when it'll make sense if you look at it when you do it. Uh, make, get those, make sure that's set in there properly. And then I'm going to take a little bit of graphite grease from Hoodie and put it on there just so that the, the header slides over nice. It doesn't wrinkle it or tear it or at all. So you can set it on there good. And then you can put your springs on. When installing the header, uh, making sure the springs are good also is very important. You want to make sure you have good tension on there, so make sure your springs are not sagged out. So if they're on there for a long time, they can get stretched out and not hold as well. So moving on down, um, we get to our next um, joint here where it has another gasket, which is very important again to be in good shape. This one seems to be more of a common problem because I think from bouncing and maybe chassis flex, but this seems to leak more often than not or more often than the, the gasket on the engine. And again, when you install the, the gasket, you want to make sure you put it on the pipe first, get it lined up with those grooves, put a little bit of graphite grease on there, and then you can slide them together and put the springs on. And again, these springs do stretch out after a while. They're just spring steel, so it's you have put them on and off a few times. Eventually, you've got to replace them, so make sure those are fresh and you your pipe can be held together properly and keep good pressure. And then... We're moving down to uh, the fuel line. Keeping the fuel line in good shape again is very important. Um, this fuel line gets hot. It gets, it's, gets run a long time. These cars run a long time. So you need to kind of replace this once in a while. You can kind of tell when the fuel line starts to turn brown that that's a good time to do it. I usually do it every second big race. So that's, I mean, that's not a lot of runtime, but I want to make sure my stuff is fresh and good. And if it's clear, it's going to be, it's going to work good. So you need to make sure you keep an eye on that. It's kind of an easy way to tell um, if your fuel line is good or not, whether the color is clear. That's why you just use a clear fuel line. It's easy to tell. And then I also put zip ties on to make sure they don't come off. They do have a little bit of a barb there, but I like to have a little bit more insurance and put a zip tie on there. And then the same goes for the tank, where it goes on the tank. I put another zip tie on there. Um, this fuel line, it doesn't really change color up here. You really notice it beside the pipe, but when that does it, it's good to good time to change it through the rest through the whole car basically. So then we have through um, put, putting pressure in there so you come out here. I like to run my fuel line as short as possible. It just makes I find it makes my car run more consistently. And then when I say short as possible I don't mean get pinched so it has a little bit of a loop here uh, but there's not a bunch of loops or anything crazy. So it just has a little bit of a line here just to flex so it doesn't get any kinks or anything in it and it's guided by the fuel line holders here and then again has a zip tie on the carburetor for extra insurance. Just all those things really um, they add up and they do make you allow for less failures and more consistent running. So that's how the fuel system works on a Nitro RC car. I can't emphasize enough on how important these things are to get a consistent pressure and fuel delivery system. Uh, this will allow you to get the most out of your Nitro engine. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.